Hello, this is Justice Jennifer Bruner, Justice of the Ohio Supreme Court. And I'm here today with Jeffrey P. Saffold, and I say his name fully because that's the way it will appear on the ballot, who is running for Common Pleas Court General Division in Cuyahoga County, Ohio. Uh, we did these um, basically mini podcasts in the 2020 election when I ran for Chief Justice, uh, when I ran for Justice, and now I'm running for Chief Justice. And um, we're going to do these again in this campaign, and I'm excited to have uh, Jeff Saffold in front of me uh, and with you today. So this is Jeffrey P. Saffold, and uh, Jeff, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, uh, education, and um, we'll go from there. I'm happy to do that, but I, I do feel like I need to take one second to thank you and let you know how much I appreciate being with you. I've got a lot of regard and respect for your career and the work that you've done. So, so thank you for having me. Um, but so I, I've, I've got 26 years now of experience. Uh, when I started this campaign, it was 25, but now it's 26. Um, I began as a, a county prosecutor, as often judges do. Um, but I, I was, was really driven to go out and do defense work um, and to, to fight for the people of the community. And that's what I've done for now over 20 years. Uh, but I had the pleasure of starting in the prosecutor's office under the late Honorable Stephanie Tubbs Jones, who I'm sure you knew. I did. Um, she gave me my start, um, and uh, and I, I worked with her. Sort of learned, you know, how to carry myself in the courtroom under her, and and also Secretary Fudge, who was like the the, the school vice president, so to speak. She kept us all in line. <laughs> this is some time ago, um, but but then I went out and began doing defense work, and it's given me. Uh, what I think is a, a, a fully rounded perspective, which I think really is ideal for judges. If, if, you could, if you could choose a way, you'd have judges see both sides of the courtroom before they, before they find themselves in the middle. Um, but I'll tell you a, a little short, short story. Um, I was in law school and well, actually I was in college and I was parking cars uh, at the Playhouse Square in downtown Cleveland, if you know where that is. I um, do. But it, it just so happened that the Child Support Enforcement Department of the prosecutor's office was in a little building between the Ohio and the, and the, or the state and the playhouse, um, the state theater and the Ohio theater. And so her honor, um, Stephanie Tubbs Jones would come in and toss me her keys and, and I would try to get the nerve up to talk to her because I knew who she was. And uh, so I finally, would, I started talking to her, put her car right up front and would, you know, greet her when she pulled in. And this would happen once every couple of weeks or so. Um, and, and, and so I thought I was going to go to law school. And she said, okay, when you go to law school, great. And, and when you finish, come see me. And I said, I'm going to. And, and then I, I kept in touch while I was in law school. I would write her letters. Um, and then sure enough, when I finished law school, I came to see her and I reminded her kind of who I was. Didn't take but a second. Um, and, uh, and she hired me right there out of law school. So I came right from law school to the prosecutor's office, then spent fast forward 20, 20 plus years doing defense work. And now here I am running for common plea court judge. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, when I was secretary of state, I worked a lot with Stephanie, um, especially when we were sort of reconstituting the Cuyahoga County board of elections. She was a great advisor and, um, you described her perfectly when she meets someone and she sees, um, something that she that, that you know she admires in that person, um, she's right there for them. From and and her word was her bond. It was that's very, right. Yeah, that's right. So um, you have um, three children in their twenties and one who's a teenager. Um, one of the things that I thought was so interesting about your background was a program, the fire program that you and your wife started. Um, can you tell people a little bit about that? Well, to be fair, it was my wife, myself, and about a half a dozen other couples who um, all kind of felt like we needed to, to keep our kids together, keep our arms around our kids and kind of build a fence around as many kids as we could sort of get in, you know, into safety. Um, a short, short, short story. We, we were together in another program and... Uh, the guy who ran the program, I'll never forget. This, is, this has been 15 years, but I swear this is a true story. He stood up in front of all of the kids of all age groups and all of the parents and said, hey, listen, you know, we, we're having some money issues. Uh, I'm going to have to go out and sell some weed to get money for uniforms. <laughs> I thought, 
oh my gosh, why am I allowing this person to lead my children? So the very next day, we, if not that night, we started talking about how we could form a more decent program and put our kids in a safer environment. And so that's what we did. We began something called FIRE, which is Family Involvement Reaps Excellence. We had football teams and cheerleading teams and dance teams and, and uh, track season and a wrestling season. So we kept the kids together year round. And one of the things that, that we started doing at the beginning of each season is we would have the kids write a letter. And the letter would be, in so many words, change from year to year, season to season, but something like, give us your definition of cool. Tell us what you think it means to be cool. And they would have to write a little letter and whoever wrote the best one or the one that we thought was most inspirational, we would, we would give free cleats to them. Um, and, and it just made all the kids, you know, start thinking, we, we hoped that it made them think about what it meant to be cool. And it was really astonishing some of the answers that you would get. Um, but we hoped that those who gave maybe sort of off base answers, we could redirect them. And that was sort of the spirit of the organization to try to get the kids focused on staying on the right path and, and, and keeping their priorities straight, particularly as they sort of grew in the program. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Um, and, and I, I know you, um, your college was interesting um, because you went two years to one college and then two years to Cleveland State and then on to law school at The Ohio State University. But your first two years was at a primarily black university. Um, talk about your experiences there. Well, so it was 99.9% .9 African American. It was a historically black college called Hampton University in Virginia. Um, it was a fantastic experience. But like a lot of young people, you know, you sort of mature at your own, own rate. And uh, I had such a good time that I forgot to focus on the books as much as I should have. So I, I ended up after having a wonderful, enriching experience and getting friends that I still have, friends that are rooting for me now as I'm running. I made lifelong friends, but I ended up transferring to Cleveland State to really focus just on school um, and, and did very well at Cleveland State and, and ended up. Uh, going to law school at Ohio State. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, we're sorry that Columbus lost you to Cleveland, but it sounds like <laughs> they need you there. So, <laughs> so the court you're running for is the Common Pleas Court in Cuyahoga County. And um, for people who may not understand, and um, I'm just going to kind of refresh if you just tuned in, this is Achieving Justice. It's a mini podcast uh, that I'm uh, Jennifer Bruner, uh, Justice of the Ohio Supreme Court conducting with uh, Jeffrey Saffold, who's a candidate for Common Pleas Court in Cuyahoga County General Division. So our, our courts in the Common Pleas, which is the trial court level, have um, the General Division, as well as uh, domestic relations, uh, juvenile and, um, and probate. So the General Division, there are, are 34 judges uh, in Cuyahoga County. I'll, I'll tell you, Franklin County has 17, but we have a lot more magistrates. But um, uh, of those 34 judges, are there any African-American male judges on that court? Not one, not one, um, which is particularly unfortunate when you think about who it is that's coming before these judges. It, it, you're, you're over 60% African-American male defendants, and, and they have a 0% chance of seeing a judge that looks like them. There are four African-American female judges, three Democrat, one Republican, and I was disappointed. Um, but but even, at, even at that, even at, at three or four African-Americans in total, that's, you know, eight to 12 percent, depending on the population. That, that's a small percentage uh, in, in reflection of the community. The African-American community in Cuyahoga County is about 35 percent, give or take. And then only you know, roughly 10 percent of the judges are African-American male or female. Yeah. So, um, and I, I, well, thank you for stepping up. That's great. Um, so this year there will be party affiliation on the ballot for Supreme Court candidates as, and uh, appellate candidates, but not for um, the, the trial courts. Uh, so you're, you were nominated by which party? About a Democratic Party. All right. Okay. And I, I think that's a, a pretty big majority in Cuyahoga County. It is. It is. But, you know, if you look at some of the turnout numbers, they're, they're scary because the Republicans have been motivated to come out. 
and the Republicans do have, have done a good job of sort of galvanizing around discord and, and uh, you know, it's, we, we've got it as a democratic party, you know, we're going to have to turn out the vote. Correct. Correct. I think we all feel that way. I think I'm sure everyone, no matter whatever, what party they are, feels like their party needs to do more to turn, to turn out more voters. So, so going to your motivations for running, um, what inspired you to run for judge? Well, um, I'll try to tell a short story. I, you know, I, I've, I've never thought of myself as a candidate for judge. Um, I've, I've had good success as a defense attorney. I put two of my kids through college. Um, you know, I've, I've been in a position where I could be selective in the cases that I chose to take. Um, you know, we were very frankly looking at possibly even retiring um, when, when the pandemic hit. Uh, we had to close the practice down. We, we, had, we had COVID within the office. And, um, you know, I began thinking about possibly retiring. Um, but but I, was, I felt like I needed to do more. I felt like there was more in me. Um, and I often talk to my children about serving. In fact, one of the passages that we have on our wall in bold words in my house um, is, is as, for, as for my house, we will serve the Lord. Um, so service is a part of uh, something that I believe in. And I, I just, uh, I felt like there was an opportunity. Um, you know, we mentioned the fire program and, I, and unfortunately every year when we start a new season, all the families would come out to support their kids. And most of the families were single mothers. And you began to wonder where were all of the fathers, um, and, and it's unfortunate. But you know the criminal justice system has played a part in breaking up an awful lot of families. Mm -hmm. And you know you you know these numbers, so I'm I'm preaching to the choir. But you look at the prisons in Ohio, and and, and you know they're bursting at the seams. And only about one in five of the people who are in prison in Ohio are there for violent crimes. And about a twenty percent, you know, it fluctuates obviously, about twenty percent of the populations of Ohio prisons are there for violent crimes. So the other 80% are nonviolent offenses. And I think, I think judges ought to be thinking about, um, you know, ways to, to be part of the solution rather than just trying to pick a number to give a person or maybe give them probation. I think we ought to be trying to think about how we can solve the problem that's causing people to come back into the system. Um, and so, you know, I've had maybe a quiet voice in the back of my mind has been saying, you can do more, you can do more. Um, and as an attorney, I did that by maybe doing some pro bono work here and there and, and maybe taking criminal assignments when I was really too busy and, and, and maybe should have focused on the retained work. I would take the assignments because I felt like I needed to be doing more. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and when, I, when I, think, I started thinking about retiring, that's when that quiet voice became a loud voice that said, no, 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 you've got a lot more to do. And, uh, and so my wife and I talked about it a great deal, and we decided that we would do this, that we would give up the practice and run for judge. Thank you for making that sacrifice. Um, and, and uh, you know, in, in the criminal justice system and when people are sent to prison, meaning the, the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections, um, as opposed to jail run by the county sheriffs, um, I think a lot of the public forgets that most people get out. And they come back to their communities. Uh, don't you agree? The other day I had a judge that um, was going to sentence my client. I won't name the judge. And I obviously won't name the client. But the judge was debating between giving the client probation or prison. And the prosecutor's comment was, well, judge, he's already been to prison before. We can't put him on probation because back in 2007, he went to prison. And I thought, OK, <laughs> OK, I'm not certain what that point means, but OK. And then ultimately the judge gave my client seven months and said, I'm just not willing to take a risk on him. And I, I was struck by that. And I didn't go back and ask the judge exactly what he meant. I've been doing this a long time. So I had a sense of what he meant. But in the end, I thought, will, will, will the community be left at risk seven months from now? When he comes out seven months from now, he won't have a job. He had one now. His case was two years old because it was a pre-pandemic case. He'd been in a community for the last two years since the offense happened. What sense does it make to send this person to prison when you're taking him away from his family, away from his job, to send him to prison for seven months, not seven years, but seven months, you're just putting his problems on pause and putting him in a much weakened position, much more weakened position when he comes home. So again, 
we need to be more about trying to solve the problem that caused this person to come before the court rather than just picking a punishment. I, I, I understand. And um, you know, for, for those who may not be familiar, the Supreme Court is in the process of developing a statewide criminal sentencing database that will, uh, that's really geared toward the kind of court that um, Jeff Saffold is running for, uh, judges sentencing on felonies. And we have 61 judges right now in Ohio using uh, a uniform sentencing entry electronic to enter the data in related to the sentencing and then it's being collected so that we can start to make comparisons and start to see, okay, what are the factors that seem to be common for the same kind of crime, the same criminal law background that would tend toward prison or is there is it skewed in our, is there demographic data like race or so, or, or, or so forth? Um, have, have you had a chance to look at that much, Jeff? First of all, I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, you have to remember that Judge Donnelly is from Cuyahoga County, and uh, <laughs> he and I were were also office mates in the prosecutor's office in the '90s. So yeah. I, I I know a good deal about it just from listening to him speak and and um, and knowing what he's about. So I'm, when, whenever he's talking, I'm always listening because I know he's he's going to be giving me what he believes would be. Um, not only the truth, but everything he does is done, done well intended. Um, you know, my, my only concern, I think it's a great idea. My only concern is what, what will ultimately in, in the end happen with some of that data? Um, you know, I've practiced in federal court a great deal and, and we have in federal court uh, this guideline system and I don't necessarily wanna see Ohio go towards a regimented guideline system like the United States government or other states like Florida. Um, I, I was licensed in Florida also, that's why I mentioned Florida. Um, you, know, you end up with these really harsh sentences and you end up you know, with judges being sort of hands tied, forced to follow this guideline driven sentence. And so it can be, there is that one concern, but I, I think that it's always better to be, to be open and transparent Correct. Um, so I, I would never argue against this concept. I think it's a great idea. I think we shouldn't do anything under the cover of darkness that we wouldn't be comfortable doing in the light of day. So the more information we can get out to the community, uh, the more open our books can be, I think the better. Um, I just sometimes worry that you'll take a harsh sentence and a light sentence and say, look at the disparity here and the way that the system will try to fix it is to turn that light sentence into a harsh sentence rather than maybe meeting in between or rather than giving the judges the freedom to make uh, choices, you might end up with a system that becomes more harsh over time. Uh, that's, a, that's a great point. And um, I'm actually working with the folks that are developing it and uh, ideas like that, I will be taking back to those folks because uh, that's never been anyone's intent. It's been what you mentioned, which is the transparency for the public to see, for um, criminal justice researchers to use, for ODRC itself um, to use so that we, we better understand um, <clears throat> which people um, you know, may be not the kind of risk, like you mentioned on that seven, seven month sentence to, for a judge to take a risk and go ahead and allow that person to remain in the community with the appropriate supervision so that perhaps um, instead of being good at serving a prison sentence, they'll be good at living in the community. Yes. Um, and it's great to know that um, potential judges like you are out there um, to help carry that idea forward. So um, is there, I'm gonna ask you one final question is, and, and um, is there anything that you think would, um, th that you want somebody to know about you that's special about you? Well, <laughs> I mean, I guess we've kind of touched on it. I mean, I want people to know what I'm about. I, 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 I say the same thing when I'm on the far east side of Cuyahoga County as I do when I'm on the far west side of Cuyahoga County. In fact, what I will sometimes do when I, when I go far west, I will say, listen, it took me 40 minutes to get here. So if you don't <laughs> mind, I'm going to be myself. <laughs> I feel like I've earned it because of the 40 minutes of drive time. Yeah. And, and then I'll, I'll, I'll say, listen, I, you know, I believe that that uh, mass incarceration has failed as an idea. Um, I think that if you listen to smart people who were smart in the 80s and smart in the 90s, now when you're looking back in 2022, 
those same smart people are generally willing to recognize that the things that they said in the 90s were wrong. That the things they said about we need to be harder on punishments, we need to throw away the key, we need to have three strikes, you're out ideas. Those ideas seemed good then, and these were well-intended people, but now we've had 30 years of seeing the effect of taking people out of the community, warehousing them for absurd amounts of time. We're talking about nonviolent offenses now. So to just warehouse people, it, it hasn't worked. I'm not about that. I won't ever be about that. If you come to my court, if I'm fortunate enough to be elected, the people choose me to be a judge. If somebody is committing violence in the community, there, there, there's going to be a need to incarcerate. You know, firearms, obviously, mandatory prisons. I understand mandatory prison time. Certainly, I will have the heart to incarcerate when it's necessary. But as a general principle, I don't believe in the idea of mass incarceration. I believe in being thoughtful, being energetic. I will sometimes say to, to judges who are with me out on the stump that I'm going to start a, a, a regimen of, of working out. But I'm going to try to get them to go running with me so they will have more energy and will be able to take the time to, to figure out what the problem is that's causing these people to keep coming back and forth to the system. So that's, that's who I am. When, I, when, when you think of me as a judge, that's who I am. I'm a, a person who's going to take the time and the energy. I'm going to be committed. I will make mistakes. But I'm going to be committed to trying to figure out what the solution is so I can get people back on path. That's lovely. I, I, I can agree with you. As a former trial judge, it's a lot more work to put somebody on probation because if they mess up, they're back in front of you than it is to ship them off to prison. But we're dealing with people and it's so worth it. Um, so yeah. I want to I want to thank you so much for being with me today. This is Jeffrey P. Saffold. He'll be on the ballot as Jeffrey P. Saffold running for Cuyah Cuyahoga County Common Pleas Court Judge General Division. And uh, the election is November the 8th. Uh, polls are open from 630 in the morning till 730 at night. I know people in Cuyahoga County are going to see him out on the trail. And by watching this, we hope we've given you a chance to know a little bit more about the judges who will be on your ballot this fall. And this is Justice Jennifer Bruner of the Ohio Supreme Court. And you've been watching Achieving Justice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.